My mum has always been the adventurous type. As kids, she would take me and my brothers on bushwalks in the pouring rain and wild coastal walks which left us clambering up rocks in an attempt to avoid the ocean spray at high tide. And yes, she even stole us away to Africa for five weeks. Mm -hmm. My mother, a single mum, with three kids and pregnant with her fourth at the time. Oh. So you can imagine how I've always looked up to her and what she has made of her life. Whenever I need a dose of courage or a little nudge to take the first step, she's there. In fact, she's partly the reason why I'm here today in front of you as she herself used to be a Toastmaster. She is also the reason why two and a half years ago, I went on my exchange to France. She knew my passion for French, my ubiquitous, unbounding passion, and she only helped me to fuel it by insisting I go. Before I knew it, I was flying international all the way to Paris, all the way to a city that I never knew would soon come to feel like home. Now, I don't know if most people, when they go to Paris, they come away feeling disappointed. But when I went, I'm not sure if it was the fact that I stayed with a host family or got to go to school there and really get to know the locals, but I fell in love with Paris. I even have the bunting up in my home with the words Paris je t'aime, which means Paris, I love you. I still remember the smell of freshly baked baguettes that my host father, Jean-Paul, used to get from the bakery every morning, which I know sounds cliche, but it actually was a reality for me. And all of the laughter that me and my classmates shared at school as I tried to speak French and then they tried to speak English and our accents would just lead to major miscommunication. I also enrolled, if that was enough of a language barrier, I enrolled into a third year Spanish class which was all taught by a French teacher. <laughs> so yeah, that was never a good idea. <laughs> Something unique to my experience though was the fact that my family, my host family, was only half French, the other half being Italian. I will never forget my slightly terrifying but also eye-opening trip to Italy with them over the Christmas break. We stayed in a tangerine coloured apartment with my, in Napoli, with my host sister's um, aunt, cousin and grandma. So three generations of powerful women and wow, they were powerful in every aspect. Even at dinner, these women at either head of the table would stand up out of the blue and start yelling at each other in Italian. <laughs> and me, not comprehending a single word and being a very shy 16 year old, just sat there pretending like everything was okay, everything was fine, when really I just wanted to melt into my seat and disappear. <laughs> it was amusing, however, watching their facial expressions and their animated body language as I tried to figure out what on earth they were arguing about. The juxtaposition was, however, real when on Christmas Day, I sat cradling a gorgeous Italian baby under one arm and a massive glass of red wine the size of my head <laughs> in another, all while playing Monopoly with the family. Such a bonding experience. It was a fascinating thing being able to catch a glimpse of a very different family dynamic on the other side of the world, but also to observe some of the similarities too. And while these experiences are only a small insight into the many crazy adventures I endeavoured on during my exchange, one thing that I realised was that I am definitely a Francophile at heart. And only as I was writing the speech two days ago, at past midnight, did I realise how crucial it was for me to have that figure in my life, my mum, who helped me to realise the full potential of what adventures await so long as you run at them with open arms. 
And my hope for you today, fellow Toastmasters and guests, are that you have that person in your life who, who is bold, in French you would say, someone who is audacieux, who pushes you to be bold or audacieux. And if not, my life challenge for you is to go out and find them. Merci. Merci. Thank you, Maya, for such a wonderful speech. You make me want to go back to Paris again. <laughs> Our second speaker this morning is Linda Jeffries. Linda is an experienced Toastmaster. She's been the Toastmasters for around nine years. She was the principal of Papatoy Central Primary School until only recently when she retired. The details of her speech are as follows. It's project number two, a praise with praise from the advanced manual, speeches by management. The objectives of her speech is number one, give a speech demonstrating the importance of how you personally use feedback, uh, feedback techniques in your daily life. Number two, use constructive evaluation to help someone improve their performance. And that someone will be Maxime, the guinea pig for this morning. <laughs> and then third, offer support to empower them to change. The time is five to seven minutes, one to two minutes introduction and three to five minutes role playing. And now ask, Max oh, sorry. So please help me welcome Linda. Toastmasters and guests. The focus of this morning is a round appraisal. Who's had the opportunity to be either on the receiving end or the delivering side of an appraisal process? Very good. For those of you, appraisal is a, is a form of feedback. It is a way in which a discussion and conversation can be held between the person with the goals and generally speaking a superior or a management or a leader. And the idea is that between the leader and the person with the goals, the conversation leads to how well they're meeting their goals, what support is required. And the role of the appraiser, which will be me this morning, is to provide some constructive, timely, specific feedback around the goals that Maxine has set. There are various forms of appraisal. 360, where a whole lot of people give you feedback. Peer appraisal. Self-appraisal, which I like. <laughs> <laughs> but this morning's appraisal is, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> is based around management by objectives which was developed by Peter Drucker back in 1954. Mm -hmm. So it's an old process of appraisal. Sorry. Um. Ooh. So this morning, I'd like to invite Maxine forward to be part of the process. Maxine has two goals. I'm playing the role of area director. Maxine is president of the Toastmasters Club, and she has two goals that she would like to work on. One is around executive the meetings and making them timely. And the other one is around her exec and trying to encourage them to fulfill their roles. And Maxine feels that she's a bit ubiquitous 
in her role as president of her Toastmasters Club, and that she's everywhere and likes to have a handle on all sorts of things, and this can be quite demanding. So that conversation will be leading Maxine. So Maxine, welcome to our appraisal meeting this morning. Can you please have a seat? Thank you. Thank you, Maxine, for taking the time to be with us this morning to reflect on your two goals that you set earlier. The first goal you wanted to focus on was the timely management of the meetings. I was very impressed with the two meetings that I attended with how well you ensured that the meeting flowed very well and kept to time. Were there some challenges around that role that you... No, no, not at all, because I just ring the bell if they go overdue. If they go over time, I just ring the bell and ring the bell and ring the bell, and they're now quite disciplined. <laughs> Well, they're on time. <laughs> <laughs> My question is around how, how do you think they've responded to that ringing of the bell? Well, they're on time. <laughs> I, 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 there's nothing else that's really important to me. They're just on time, and I need them to be on time because it's Toastmasters. <laughs> and uh, certainly, as I said earlier, the meeting certainly did run to time. Yes. And everybody is now getting used to your style of time management? I, I, I'm I, sure they are, yes, because they're on time. <laughs> and they were before. Well, that's a very good positive outcome. Yes. Do, you see, would, would, do you see that process being continued when you are no longer president? Do you feel you've got a good firm foundation oh, of practice? I hate to think, because, you know, it's, it's all by the bell. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm always reading it. Like, I make sure I'm timer every day. To, to, well, when well, you've got to get them on time. Have you considered perhaps training or supporting someone else in the role so that that process can continue to be embedded into, into the meetings? Oh, is that something worth thinking about in the next six months? I've never thought of that. Because um, I sort of, I'm one of these women. Right? <laughs> yes. yes. Um, I've not thought of that. Oh, oh my, I've never thought of that. I've just, I've just got to keep them on time. But I won't be here forever. That's true. So, right. you know, so maybe, maybe add to your goal around timely and efficiency is about making sure that those practices are well embedded, so that right. they can be continued by training up other people and supporting them in that role. Oh gosh, that's a new thought. Okay. Well, we'll we'll have a discussion right. a bit further on. So. That would be great for you to consider that in the next six months. Yeah. The other goal that you were focusing on was around the roles of the executive committee. Mm -hmm. You felt that one of the things that you tended to do was to come up with lots of bright ideas, which is really important, but you obviously emailed them lots and lots of time, and therefore they may feel a little bit threatened by that approach. Or maybe you might like to have a reflection around how those goals, that goal can be achieved in a different form. So how, what challenges have you met with that? Well, being honest, uh, I would have to change. What, what would you have to change? Well, I'm used to being in control. <laughs> you know, it's having 10 children and, and <laughs> them all my, no, I'm serious. I'm used to being in control. And I think I've, I've brought this to, to the role. And, and so I suppose in some ways I actually treat the exec like my children. <laughs> <laughs> Have you given, just with your time management yeah. in terms of supporting someone else to take on that yeah. role, have you had sort of any feedback from your exec around your style of leadership to support them to grow their their No, it's not no. Is there a way no. you could see the two going together? I'm not really enjoying this. Um, these, this is new thoughts to me. Okay. Um, no. So it's a challenge never, for you? Yes. So I mean, you only have 10 kids and, and you know. Yeah. So in terms of your Toastmasters role as president, yeah. as you're a director, what can I do to help you oh, and support gosh. you I on think this you, next step? If I'm going to take something like that on where I'm really looking at myself instead of what yes. they do, yes. I think you need to come to most meetings. Okay. 
and you could give me feedback afterwards. I mean, this is going to be really strange because basically I don't trust other people to do, you know, what they should be doing because it says, gets back to those 10 kids. That's right, your family, and it's nice the fact that you think of your Toastmasters as being your family, because that is a nice family approach to being part of a meeting, and that's important. But there's also opportunity to right. develop and grow the members of the Toastmasters Club. So I would take up your offer and come along to the meetings to support you, and maybe part of that process will be your self-reflection around how well you are able to let go mm. so that, um, and it will, I appreciate it will be 